Trusting Brothers and Sisters in Christ. Welcome to you worshiping in person in the sanctuary or online via live stream on YouTube to this our Christmas Eve worship service here at the James Street Methodist Church. Merry Christmas to you and may God grant you peace in the coming year. To any first time or repeat visitors, we thank you for choosing the James Street Methodist Church and we hope that you will join us again. This year has yet again been a trying one for many of us, but we are grateful for the love and faithfulness of God and the hope we have in Christ Jesus. In our pulpit tonight is Rev. Derek Richards, Superintendent Minister of the James Street Spicetown Circuit and Bishop of the South Caribbean District. We pray that God's Holy Spirit will continue to guide and strengthen him. We await the message that God has laid upon his heart. We say thank you to all those responsible for the preparation of the sanctuary, the sexton and hospitality team, the audiovisual team, the chorale and organist, as well as any others participating in this service. We pray for God's continued blessings and strength as you commit to do his work. As we seek to maintain a safe and healthy environment in the sanctuary, please be guided by the members of our hospitality team and remember to wear your face mask covering both your nose and mouth for the duration of the service. For those of our number who are experiencing grief, challenges or losses, we pray that God's peace will cover and comfort you. Let us continue to lift each other up in prayer. For those who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or any other milestones at this time, we celebrate with you. Congratulations and prayers for God's continued blessings. I take this opportunity to remind you of our upcoming services. Tomorrow, Christmas morning at 5 a.m. Please note this service will be streamed via YouTube and broadcasted on CBC TV, as well as radio stations Q100.7 FM and Life 97.5 FM Live. Our Sunday worship service on December the 26th at 9 a.m. Watch night service on New Year's Eve, December the 31st at 10.30 p.m. Please note that the registration link will be provided in a future email. Brothers and sisters, we gather again to celebrate Jesus' humble entry into the world. He who came to save us was born in a stable filled with hay. Let us recall the words recorded in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus is the hope of salvation, and forever he will reign. Let us worship God. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ, those who are worshiping with us here in the sanctuary and those who are joining us via YouTube. We welcome you to this, our service of the eve of the nativity and evening of carols and the sacrament of the Holy Communion. We begin with the reflight and liturgy the Christ scandal. Because injustice and despair threatens to overwhelm us, we pray for hope. Because grief and loss weigh us so heavily, we pray for joy. God has come to us as a child to dwell with us and to walk with us.
brothers and sisters, be not afraid. Even now, even now, the light of Christ is overwhelming the world on earth as it is in heaven. We stand as we join our voices and sing the hymn, Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild, Jesus Christ, her little child.
I just quiet, quiet in our hearts as we go to God in prayer. In the stillness of this moment. We acknowledge God's presence among us. We come to him this evening knowing that he's here with us. His word reminds us that where two or more are gathered in his name, that he's here in the midst of us. So we come this evening on this the eve of the nativity to celebrate and to worship our God of love. The God who loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ a radical plan, a transformative plan to bring mankind back into relationship with him. It was God's expression of love that he sent his son here among us that first advent. And we know it also that this love that was extended and expressed also by the Son Jesus, who in obedience to the Father and out of his love for the Father, did not find it robbery to give up or to not cling to his divinity. But he gave himself up. Scripture tells us he emptied himself and became as a bond servant, coming as a man into the world. And he came because of his love for mankind, sacrificed himself for us so that we can enter into relationship with our Father and with Him. So Christmas and the Nativity as we celebrate is God's plan, God's amazing plan of love, His amazing plan to bring mankind back into relationship with Him. His amazing plan to redeem us. So you are the God we adore, our faithful and unchangeable friend. And out of your love we can come this evening to worship you and to praise you and to give you thanks for your master plan that took us out of the depths of sin. That original sin that was done by Adam and you gave us the opportunity for all who believe to enter into this relationship with you. So this year, Lord, we celebrate you in this eve and we celebrate you in the nativity as a loving God, a God who kept your promises to never leave or forsake us. A God who provided for us in hard times throughout the last year. And even as we come to the end of the year, we recognize that you were with us and that you've kept us in the midst of all the challenges that you were with us. We acknowledge you as a God who is a healer, the God who kept us, and the God who healed our bodies in the midst of all the challenges that we face. Even from the COVID-19, you have kept us, you have healed us. And we come tonight to give you thanks, to worship you, to praise you, to reflect on the love that you have for us. That even when things were hard, when things were tight, 
that you supplied our every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So for these things, Lord, this evening, as we lift our voices, as we sing these wonderful hymns of the season, as we reflect on your goodness this evening, our praise and our worship is out of our adoration for you, Lord God. And as we are in your presence, Lord, if there is anything in us, any sin of omission, anything, Lord, that would hinder the activity of your Holy Spirit among us this night here, we ask that you search us. Search our innermost being even now, Lord. Purge us, cleanse us. Bring to our memory, Lord, as even as we prepare for the sacrament of the Holy Communion, bring to our memory anything, Lord, any sin of omission or commission, Lord. Expose us and allow us, dear God, to repent and to ask you for your forgiveness. Because we know, Lord, that, if you, that you have told us in your word that if we confess our sins to you, that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we thank you for your forgiveness, Lord, this evening. And now, Lord, we present our bodies to you as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable in your sight this evening. We ask, dear God, that your Holy Spirit will come now and take your rightful place in this worship. Come and sit next to us. Come and minister to us. That you will minister, Lord, even to your, your manservant, our bishop who will bring the word this evening, Lord, and that he will bring forth a word, a transforming word in season. That we can commit ourselves to you, commit our lives to you, individually and corporately as a church. A word that will take us and challenge us into the 2022. A word that will take us and challenge us in our faith walk. A word that will take us and reassure us of your love, reassure us of your goodness and your faithfulness. So come, Holy Spirit. Take your rightful place in this worship, in this sanctuary, across the virtual network, Lord, in the homes, Lord, those who are gathered in this service, in their homes, that you, Lord, will come in your power because you're everywhere. You're omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, Lord, and you are in the homes as you are here in this sanctuary and that you will meet every need. Meet every need, Lord. And we declare that this is the Lord's house. And Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. And all the brothers and sisters in Christ say unto him the highest praise this evening. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. We continue in our worship.
continue with our carols as we sing the hymn, Heart the Herald Angels Sing, followed by O Come All Ye Faithful.
another verse again. Eh? Sing choir of angels, sing in exaltation. Sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest. Let's sing that chorus, that verse again, followed by the chorus. And then we will hear the reading from the Old Testament. seated as we hear the reading from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 to 7. Isaiah 9 verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son is given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We again join our voices as we sing a song from when you hear it, you'll know it. Brother Ernie Smith sang a song, no matter if you're thief or if you're dread or if you have a crown upon your head, no matter if you have no heart at all, Jesus brings love to one and all. Sing it, children. So let's stand and sing, Jesus come today for a poor, poor man like me.
reading from Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14, followed by the offertory prayer by the Congregational Steward. Titus 2, 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce piety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The reading of the word. We go to God in prayer for the offertory. O oh Lord and our God, we thank you that we can gather again to hear the good news of Jesus' birth. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of Christ, for the gifts of love, joy, peace, and hope. Bless, O oh God, us as we bless you with these, our gifts, in service of you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue our singing of carols as we sing the hymn Star Child, Earth Child.
The Gospel is according to Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 14. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Crinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth into Galilee to, Judea, to Judah, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to, to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was, there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for, see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people for all the people to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. This is the gospel of Christ. Remain stand as we prepare to hear the proclaimed word from the Reverend Derek Richards. We sing the hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
please be seated. It is with great joy that I greet you on this blessed night in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is indeed a great joy for us to be celebrating the birth of our Messiah, Lord, our Savior, King, Jesus. And so as we celebrate, I pray that your hearts will be warmed by the carols, that you will be blessed by the words of Holy Scripture, and you'll be encouraged by our fellowship together. I heard uh, an interesting story as I was preparing this message. And the story is about a pastor who was preaching on Christmas Eve night. And his sermon went quite long. His thoughts were not properly captured. They were scattered. He rambled on and on and on. It was difficult to follow the sermon. When he was greeting the congregation at the end of the service, as the pastor stood at the entrance or the exit, one of his members surprised him when she commented, Pastor, your sermon tonight reminded me of God's peace and love. The pastor was flattered. At least someone was following him. And he said, really? How so? Well, it reminded me of God's peace in the way it surpassed all understanding. And it reminded me of God's love because it seemed to endure forever and ever. I assure you that tonight I will be as brief as possible as we reflect together on the story of Christmas. Let us pray. God, our Father, for all the ways in which you have shown the extent of your love for us and to us in the story of Christmas, in the story of Jesus, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and his life forevermore. We pray that you will surprise us this evening with your love. We pray that you will prove again for us the extent of your grace and your commitment to redeeming humanity. So speak, O oh God, a word that will stir our hearts and bless our lives and give us grace to properly celebrate this season. And so into your hands I commit myself and pray that you'd use me, even me, to proclaim your word. So let the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, some of you may have been praying about a particular situation in your life for a very, very long time. And there seems to be absolutely no change. But well, as a matter of fact, your situation may seem to be getting worse as the year rolls over. 
Every year at Christmas time, you hear scripture passages and sing your favorite carols about peace on earth, goodwill to all people. We have lit the candle of Advent and Christmas. We often sing Silent Night, all is calm, all is bright. And they are beautiful experiences, calms our hearts. But does it really make any difference? Does it really make any difference if we go through the Advent season and each Sunday we light a candle representing love, joy, peace, and hope, and sing the beautiful carols that are so mesmerizing? Does it really make a difference to our daily experiences, our daily lives, our journey in this world. Our world seems to be very, very dark, and every day it seems to be getting darker and darker. It's the second Christmas that we will spend battling an invisible enemy that has caused widespread suffering and death. So many people have been directly impacted by COVID-19. This has not only been a health crisis, it is also an economic crisis. It is a social crisis. It is a personal crisis, a mental health crisis. We have plunged into deep, deep darkness. Additionally, we must confront acts of violence in our society. We must confront the pain that we experience as a result of the harsh realities of life. We must confront the brokenness, brokenness in relationships, brokenness in our communities. And what about the injustices that are so prevalent in our world? The global climate crisis has been added to our list of urgent, urgent things that must be addressed in order to support and maintain life on this planet. And these, this has come home to us forcefully as we were disrupted and interrupted this year by the passage of Hurricane Elsa that reminded us of this climate crisis. We had also had to confront the explosive eruption of the volcano in St. Vincent that dumped tons of ash over this country. This has been a difficult year, hasn't it? This has been an extremely difficult and painful year. And when we add to that the personal situations that we have had to confront in our lives, that we have not told anyone about, but we have personally grappled with issues, it has been a tough and difficult year. You look at some of the countries in our region and in our world, and there are deep, deep divisions. In some cases, the divisions are between entire communities, the fighting for turf. Perhaps you have experienced them in your own community, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, maybe even in your own family. Is peace really possible? 
Is joy really attainable? We do not need to look too far to see the signs of pain and brokenness. We look within ourselves and we find the restlessness in our hearts, the divisions within, fightings without and fears within. We feel the ache, the longing for something more, for our lives to be well and whole. Is peace and joy really possible? We can pray for peace within ourselves, our relationships, our nation, and our world. We can yearn for joy. But after a while, you do wonder if you've just been talking to a wall and your words keep bouncing right back at you. Hey, is there anyone there? Is anyone listening? Is there anyone in heaven who can help? We may cry out. The world is upside down. God has something in mind for us today to ponder on. God created this world in balance. God created this world good. God created this world and God looked at God's creation and God said it is good, but something happened. Something happened that turned God's perfect created world upside down. Something happened that sin entered this world and has been creating havoc in our societies and in our lives. God created everything good, but everything has been messed up. Sin made a mess of things, disrupted God's shalom, fractured our relationships with God, with each other, with creation, and with ourselves. But God refused to leave the world in the mess that it is in. God refused to leave the world fractured and broken. God refused to have a world with so many walls, so many divisions. So what God does and what God did is that God entered the world himself to fix the world. And this is what Christmas is about. This is what we celebrate great that God himself entered the mess of the world to redeem God's world and to redeem us. This, my brothers and sisters, is the hope of Christmas. This, my brothers and sisters, is what we celebrate at this time of the year. God comes to be with us, among us. God calls a people to be God's covenant people, a light to the nations. Sometimes they live into their calling. Much of the time they don't. But God's intent is to pull the world back together, break down the walls that divide, restore relationships, restore God's shalom, bring back peace to the world. So Isaiah prophesies about it in our passage for tonight. He talks about a child who will be a light in the darkness, a Messiah, a Savior who will come to draw the world back to God, draw the world back together, draw people back to God and back to each other. God's peace will again be established in the hearts of individuals and in nations. And his name, according to Isaiah, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Jesus, which means God saves. And he has a face 
He entered this world in flesh. When God in Jesus entered this world in flesh, let me say to us briefly, three things happened. One, God himself came and dwelt among us in the mess of this world. Therefore, even though our world is broken, even though our world is messed up, even though 2021 has been a difficult and painful year, not once has God been absent. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This, my brothers and sisters, is what makes life bearable. This is what made 2021 bearable. This is why we have come through, because a God in Jesus has been with us all the way. When it hurt, God was with us. When we were in pain, God was with us. He never left us. He never forsaken us. Us. He has been with us all through this year, and now we come to celebrate God's presence in God's world. Had it not been for the presence of God in Jesus, we would not have made it. Had it not been for the presence of Jesus, we would not have been able to come through. We have been able to interpret life through the lens of faith in Jesus Christ. And so when we face difficult situations, we were able able to say, I am not alone, because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. When we face the stumbling blocks, we were able to go through them, knowing that, that we are able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. My brothers and sisters, Christmas reminds us that we are not alone, that the divine has come down to earth to dwell among us and with us, that the divine is with us always. And so in every situation, we can give thanks and praise and rejoice because God is with us. You know why so many persons of faith have made it through this pandemic so far? Because they know that they are not alone. They are reminded of the promise of Jesus. Lo, I am with you always, always to the close of the age, because they hold firm to his promise that says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. His grace and mercy have brought us through. We are living this moment because of him. God is present in the mess. God is present in the brokenness. God is present in the pain. God is present at that place where there seems to be no way. God is present when our heart aches. God is present when our lives seem turned upside down. God is present in Jesus. But also, I want to say to you quickly, not only is God present, but God brings shalom. That's a, that's a Greek word for, for peace, shalom. And peace, shalom, doesn't mean the absence of conflict and chaos, but the presence of something, the presence of justice and, and beauty and, and goodness and, and wholeness. God's very spirit, a peace in which the walls come down and we can finally be at peace at one with God and with each other. 
God brings a shalom that allows us to be reconciled with God, that even though we have erred and strayed because of shalom, it is possible to be reconciled with God. It is possible, as Jesus said of the disciples, to be friends of God, to be friends of Jesus not by our own doing, but because of what he has done. Because he has made a way. Because he has come to us when we couldn't get to him. God's shalom. That even when the world is falling apart, even when the pieces seem impossible to be put back together, we can be at one with God and at one with ourselves. Because of God's shalom, we don't need to agree on everything in order to get along. You see, because of God's shalom, we can agree to disagree. Because of God's shalom, even within the context of family where there are disagreements, you can still love one another as you love yourself. Because of shalom in the office space where you differ from people and you may not always appreciate everything about them, you can still work together for a common good. And that is because of shalom that goes beyond having everything properly ordered. It is the shalom that allows you to put your heads down at night and rest because he gives his children rest. Christmas reminds us that God in Christ is present in this world and in our lives. Christmas reminds us that God brings shalom, peace, wholeness, and so everything can hold together. That even if everything around us seems to be falling apart, we do not have to fall apart because of shalom. And let me say finally, that Jesus brought salvation. Jesus made it possible for us to be saved in the here and now and in all of eternity. Because sin entered this world, we know that there is always something that's missing, something that's lacking. Even though, even when you get all of the world's stuff, you realize that something is still missing. That what this world has to offer doesn't quite satisfy. There's a God-shaped blank in our hearts that only God alone can satisfy. And through the, the, the birth, the, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, He's done everything that is necessary for us to be reconciled with God and to know our sins forgiven, to know that we have been redeemed and given a new name, a new nature, where all things are passed away and all things become new. So my brothers and sisters, as you celebrate this year, even though our world is still messed up, you can make it through to the end of the year and into next year because the one who journeys with you is the one who is all-knowing, all-powerful, and ever-loving. You can journey through the chaos and know that all things will hold together 
and that you do not have to fall apart because he offers you wholeness. You can journey through this life knowing that when this life ends, that there is still life with God through all eternity. May your Christmas be filled with shalom. May your Christmas be filled with hope that you not be dismayed, but that you will look to him who's able to keep you. Let us pray. God, our God, we wait in your glorious presence, for you are our all in all. You have brought us through some stuff that had it not been for you, we would have been destroyed. God, the seas have been rough, and we have watched you calm the seas, brought us through. The mountains have been high. You have given us grace to climb them. The valleys have been deep. And even there we have experienced your peace. God, we are contented because you are in our lives. We are satisfied because you know what is best for us. Give us the grace to trust you with this process. And as we are reminded this Christmas season that God opened heaven and entered this messed up world because God is interested in this world and God is interested in each of us. God wants the best for you and for me. Therefore, this Christmas, let us open our hearts and receive God's best for our lives. This doesn't mean there would be no struggles, but it means that in the midst of our struggles, we will know him who's able to overcome. This doesn't mean that there would be no nights, but what it means that even in the midst of the darkness, the light comes shining through and dispels the darkness. This doesn't mean that there would be no more tears, but in the midst of that, we learn that tears is the language of love. And so, Lord God, teach us this Christmas how to open ourselves to receiving your best. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our worship continues as we celebrate together Holy Communion. The hymn is, What Child Is This?
your gift before the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has a grievance against you. Leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First you reconcile with your brother and sister and then come and offer your gift. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's a good and pleasant thing, joyful and salutary, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise. Lord God, ever living, ever blessed, almighty, all loving, to Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, you created all things and made us in your image. And then we had fallen into sin, you gave him to be our Savior. He shared our human nature and lived a fully human life. He suffered rejection and condemnation and died on the cross. And you raised him up from the dead and you exalted him to the glory of your right hand, where he reigns forever as priest and king and makes intercession for us. In witness of his glory and honor, you poured out the Holy Spirit, building up many people into one body making us living members of your holy church and enabling us to stand before you to sing your praises and celebrate your mighty act. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we join in the hymn of everlasting praise. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed Took bread into his holy hands and looking up to heaven, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, in obedience to his command, we do this in remembrance of him, praying that you will accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive your gifts of bread and wine may share in the body and blood of Christ and become united with him. And as we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, we pray that you will bring us with your whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Jesus Christ, which was broken 
for you and for me. Preserve us unto eternal life. Take, eat, in remembrance of Christ's body which was broken for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. The blood of Christ, which was shed for you and for me, keep us unto eternal life. Take and drink. Remember of Christ's blood which was shed for you and be thankful. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let me take this opportunity on behalf of the Reverend Al Walcott, Pastor Don Wayne Kogi, the rest of the staff here at James Street, our organist and music director, and his assistant, our congregational stewards and other officers of the church. It is a great joy to extend to you a blessed Christmas and a very blessed and prosperous New Year 2022. It is our prayer that as you celebrate this year, that you will know at all times the presence of Jesus, and that your celebrations will be interpreted through the person of Jesus and what he has done for us. We know that many of you have had some times of testing and trials this year. It has been far more difficult for some than it has been for others, especially our older members who may not be as able to get around. You may have been confronted with loneliness and aloneness. Please know that as a church, we continue to pray for you. Please continue to let us know how best we can serve you and pray for you and journey with you and your loved ones. For those who will be separated from loved ones this Christmas, either because you are unable to travel or they are overseas and are unable to travel to be with you, we pray that you would find creative ways to be connected with them, and that the God who has been watching between you will continue to uphold you. We pray for a good year, 2022. And a good year is really characterized with the presence of Jesus. It is not necessarily dependent on what happens with the pandemic and oh how we would like to see 
the back of COVID-19 in 2022. But if it lingers, we still have Jesus, who has promised never to leave us or forsake us. And you can be assured that this church is committed to journeying with you and your loved ones through thick and thin. We will continue to find creative ways of meeting you at your point of need. I also want to extend an invitation for you to come on board and help us so that we can be more effective in our ministries. Bring your gifts and graces, your resources and yourself, along with your faith in God. And together, we can reach the world and minister to persons at their points of need. So again, Merry Christmas on behalf of all of us at James Street. And for those of you who have been journeying with us online, I also want to extend our best wishes to you. And we do look forward to your company in 2022. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. As we bring this act of worship to a close, I want to remind you that we again meet here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. for our Christmas morning worship. And if you were not registered, then it means that you may not be able to find a seat because I'm told that the bookings were closed sometimes, some time ago because we were oversubscribed. However, please note that the service will be broadcast on CBC television, Q100.7 FM, 97.5 FM, and the James Street YouTube channel. So there are quite a number of options of how you can share and participate in this worship. Also, please note that tomorrow, after you have had your Christmas lunch or Christmas dinner, we have prepared a Christmas concert that will begin at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. The, the time will be confirmed. Just log on um, tomorrow. And we know that this will be a tremendous blessing to you. So gather the entire family around the Christmas tree or whatever is symbolic for you as you share together this beautiful concert, which is a taste of Caribbean Christmas. So there are going to be persons from across the region who are going to be sharing in this concert. Don't miss it. Let us close as we sing this song, which has been popularized here at James Street. Many persons know about the 12 days of Christmas that talks about gold ring and birds and um, turtle doves and uh, those sort of things, which have absolutely nothing or very little to do with the Christ of Christmas. We want to share with you the real 12 days of Christmas. Let us sing. Let us worship. Let us enjoy. Clap your hands if you may. Stamp your feet. Sing to the glory of God. Please stand with me and let us worship.
benediction. God of light and hope, in whom there is no darkness, cause your light to shine on us and through us to others, that they may know of you and of your love. Let us witness to your gift of Jesus, who came and taught us how to live as children of light, Go in peace, dear friends, brothers, and sisters, and know that the God of light, hope, peace, and joy goes with you now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Let me remind you that as you leave the sanctuary, please remember that the offertory boxes are placed at different points across the um, sanctuary. So if you have not yet deposited your tithes and offering, you are free to do so as you leave the sanctuary. Let us greet each other as we sing Feliz Navidad. <laughs> <laughs> 